Okay, so today we will be learning about Shiva's theorem. Now, if you have seen this theorem before, you know how important it is to solve some of the most exciting geometry problems. Shiva's theorem is taught in the Math Olympiad program at Chinda. It is also taught in the ISI entrance and CMI entrance program at Chinda. So what is this theorem all about? It tells us something about concurrent lines. So let me write that. Concurrent lines. What do I mean by concurrent lines? Well, if I have two lines which are not parallel to each other, those two lines will definitely intersect at a point if they are not parallel to each other, of course. But what about if I what about a third line? What happens then? If I put a third line in this system, it may not pass, it may not pass through this particular point. So if these all of these three lines passes through the same point, then we say that these three lines are concurrent, that they pass through the same same point. Uh, Similarly, if I have a fourth line which is passing through the same point, we say these four lines are concurrent. So, this is the meaning of concurrent lines. And what does Saver's theorem give us? It gives us a condition when three lines in a particular triangle are, are concurrent. So, to understand Shiva's theorem, we have to first understand the word Shavian. So let me write that down. Let's understand the word Shavian first. So what is Shavian? Well, you take a triangle. So I'm doing this in the context of a triangle. Let's say ABC. You start from a vertex and you join a point on the opposite side of that vertex. So maybe this is P, any point, any point on the opposite side of that vertex. So AP, this particular line is a Shavian. That's how we denote it. So for example, median is a Shavian, is a special Shavian. angle bisector angle bisector that's also a shavian similarly altitude is a shavian so we have all sorts of special examples of a shavian so these are special examples and the shavian is the general term we reserve for all such lines okay so we understand what is a Shavian now. Great. So when we will now talk about the statement of the Shavers theorem. So here is the Shavers theorem. We often use the converse of the Shavers theorem instead of the Shavers theorem itself. So what is the statement? It says that if you have a triangle ABC, any triangle, ABC and if there are three concurrent Shavians, so one, two, and three. So if there are if there are three concurrent Shavians, let's say the feet of them are D, E, and F, then a particular ratio is true. So, what ratio is that? Well, you start from B. I, I, okay, I'll tell you how I remembered this. Okay, so you start from you start from any vertex. Let's start from B. 
B to D, D to C, so I write BD by DC times C to E, E to A, so I write CE by EA and then A to F, F to B, so I write AF by FB. This is equal to 1. Okay. So this is the statement of Shiva's theorem. So it says that if AD, BE, CF are concurrent, that is they pass through the same point, let's call this point P, then we have this, then we have this particular condition. Okay, maybe I can just make this a little bit smaller. Okay, and let's put this here. Then we have this condition. Okay. So how are we going to prove this thing? Because this is one of the most important theorems that you will face in Math Olympiad training and in geometry per se. So how are we going to prove this? Well, we will be using the method of areas. So the method of area. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'll give you the first step, step one. And the step one is you take this area ABD and you take ACD, you take their ratio. So ABD and ACD, the ratio of these two areas, this is equal to BD over DC. Why is that? Because this is a very powerful result, simple but powerful result. If the vertices of two triangles are same and if their bases are on the same straight line, then the ratio of the areas of these two triangles is equal to the ratio of the bases. We discussed this it at length in other videos and as well as in our Math Olympiad program. It's a very important tool in geometry. Ratio of the basis would be equal to the ratio of the areas of the triangle. Why is that? Well, if you drop a perpendicular, both of the triangles will have the same height. So the if you take the ratio of the areas, the heights will cancel off, half will cancel off, only the ratio of the basis will remain. Okay, so now that we understand this, we can also say that this BD by DC is equal to triangle PBD by triangle PCD, the ratio of these two areas. So the ratio of these two is also BD by DC. The ratio of PBD and PCD is also BD by DC. PBD and PCD. PBD and PCD. So the ratio of the PBD and PCD is also BD by DC. The same reason. P is the vertex. Both of them share the same vertex and the bases are on the same straight line. So now we will do a trick. The trick is called subtrahendo. So I'll take, I'll make a little bit space and I will write that down. Maybe I'll write the spelling wrong. So what is this, what is this uh, tool of proportionality? Well, if you have A by B equal to C by D, then both of these ratios will be equal to A minus C by B minus D. Why? Well, you can try to prove this and comment, put a comment in the description with how you can show this to be true. It's very simple, <clears throat> but give it a try. Okay. Do this and put a comment. Let me see how you can do this. Okay. So we will apply this here. So we will do the simple step where we do ABD minus PBD divided by ACD 
माइनस पीसीडी सो एबीडी माइनस पीबीडी इज इक्वल टू दिस एपीबी ट्रायंगल एंड यू कैन चेक दैट एबीडी माइनस पीबीडी दिस बिग ट्रायंगल माइनस दिस स्मॉलर वन इज दिस शेडेड वन राइट एंड सिमिलरली दिस वन विल बी एपीसी ACD minus PCD will be APC. So this is PAB by PAC. That is what BD by DC is. BD by DC is PAB by PAC. That's what we got. Okay. So BD by DC right here is triangle PAB. PAB by PAC. That's the ratio. Can you find similarly CE over EA and AF over FB? Use the same sort of strategy and then check what happens if you multiply these out. Each of these ratios will be equal to the ratio of areas of two triangles. You have to figure out which two and then see if if everything cancels off because if everything cancels off then this product would be equal to one that's our goal that's what we tried one to prove uh, this if you come back to the statement you will see that this product is equal to one that is the goal of this particular theorem so even the even the converse of shiva's theorem is true but you have to carefully think about why. I will stop out here for today. Keep on doing great mathematics. I'll come back in the next one. Okay. Bye.